This video continues our series on consuming JSON in C Sharp Visual Studio 2019. And we, we've already looked at how to consume JSON by creating a client stub using QuickType and also using QuickType to generate the DTO. So I'll hit that relatively quickly. Uh, the part that we want to take a look at here is how do you handle the case where you're consuming a JSON API and it requires a key and you want to push your stuff to a public repository like GitHub, but you don't want to make your key publicly available to the world because there's a fee associated with the volume of that key. So the order of operations we're going to do is get a key from an API provider. In this case, it's weatherbit.io. Add that to a text file. Add the text file to the gitignore. Use QuickType to generate our DTO and our client classes and then use system.io.file.readAllText to read our key and apply it to the URL. So I went to jsonservices.com. I found, I searched for weather, found this current weather forecast, and I go to weatherbit.io. And what you'll see here is under pricing, there's a free tier for non-commercial use, starter, developer, and advanced, so on and so forth. A little feature comparison here. So the free uh, unit allows you 500 calls per day uh, which is enough for me, but the trick is if everybody had my key, we'd probably run out of calls pretty quickly. So I went ahead and registered for a key, and then I'm going to go to my Visual Studio project. And what I've done is I've created a file called Weather API Key. So just right-click, and we'll say Add, and we'll say New Item, and then say File. Give it whatever name you wish to give it. I just did a plain old text file, and I called it uh, Weather API Key, just an empty text file. And here I've put in some dummy text. Obviously, this is not my Weather API Key. But what I want to show you is this. If I right-click right now, and I go to Source Control, and then I go to Commit, notice what's going to happen. You see, it's going to get a code behind that I worked on in our previous video, but it also wants to add my Weather API Key and push that up to GitHub, which I don't want to do. So let's go back, and let's think about how we can do this a different way. I'm going to right click on Consume Specimens and I'm going to go to Open Folder and File Explorer. Uh, now this takes me to my Consume Specimens project. I need to go up one level uh, where the solution is and find the gitignore. Now I'm going to open the gitignore. We'll open with our favorite uh, editing tool and down towards the bottom I'm going to say Weather API Key and what did I call that file? Let me just remember exactly what I called it. Weather API key.txt. I just want to get that capitalization correct. Probably best if I copy and paste that anyway, but weather API key.txt. And now I save this file. Okay, so just edit it off of the uh, outside of Visual Studio. Let's go back now and try this commit one more time. I try commit. Ah, take a look. That weather API key file is not present, so it's not going to get pushed to GitHub. Okay, I'm going to pause the video for a moment, and I'm going to put my actual key in there so that I can continue with this demonstration. Now I'm back in the code behind file in the on get uh, method. I will fully admit that this is well overdue for some refactoring. We will take a look at that when we discuss what methods are, but for the moment, we're just concer concerned about uh, consuming some JSON. Also, uh, I took the client generated from QuickType. Uh, so just one moment. I'll grab a bit of data here. So here's weather data, control A, control C. We can put this into quick type, control A, control V. And then that generates for us uh, a bit of data. So uh, we might need to tweak the generated namespace and or the generated name of this class. These are things I've covered in a previous video, which is why I'm kind of hitting this fast forward. Save us a bit of time here. Control A, control C to copy the source code. And what I did is I pasted that into a class called weather.cs with the namespace quick type weather and the welcome, the uh, initial class called welcome. So did that all behind the scenes just to save a bit of time. If you're curious how that works, I'll point you to a couple earlier videos uh, in this uh, playlist. But nonetheless, there it is. So first of all, let's read the key. System.io.file.readAllText. And then we just pass the name of the file. We're going to treat this as local and relative to the root of our project, weather API key txt just make sure that the spelling match with the name of this file capitalization all of that's important now read all text is going to return a string so let's say string key equals like so and then we'll say uh, guess what web client 
this might start to be, uh, sound kind of normal here. Dot download string. And now here's where things get a little bit tricky because what we have to do is we have to have kind of like a root URL and then we have to add our key to the end of that root URL. Want the root URL? We can grab it from the browser, just like so. Just grab everything to the left of that key. Uh, also, it's it's the same root URL that we'll see on the JSON services directory with just a little blank here that API underscore key is the key that we want to use. And it, it, that's a token where we want to put our actual key. So we'll take that, we'll go back to our consume specimens and just like so. Okay, paste in the URL and the key and fix my spelling of download, just like so. Okay, and now we'll save this string weather string. So this is just the raw JSON data that we're saving into a string. We still need to parse it into some weather data. So next line, I'm going to say quick type weather, which is the namespace I gave for this class, dot welcome, dot from JSON. And then we pass in our weather string, just like so. And once again, let's look very closely and see what this is going to return. It's going to return an object of type quick type weather dot welcome. So quick type weather is the namespace dot welcome. And then we'll say welcome weather is our variable name equals quick type weather dot welcome, just like so. Um, now let's try to get an idea of what the precipitation is. So I'm going to say long precip equals zero. The idea is we'll eventually say, if we have no precipitation, pay attention to these water loving plants. So we have the specimen data and where they're located. We have the plant data, and now we have a bit of weather data as well. Now, reading the weather data from this particular API is, is a, little bit, a little bit tricky. If I say welcome weather dot data, so it's a little tricky, but it's also a lesson in grammar. Uh, welcome weather dot data. Data by definition is plural. So uh, this means it's a collection of data records uh, of about weather. So we want to pull out the record that appeals to us. And in this case, because I've given it a city of Cincinnati, it's actually only going to return one record. Uh, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and iterate over it. But the, the trick here, what I'm explaining here is that you might be expecting one record. It's going to give you an array. That array might only have one record in it. We still need to do the mechanics of looping over this array just in case there are zero records or in case there are more than one record. We want to be sure to handle those cases. So for each, and then we'll say quick type weather dot datum. Take a look at that weather in weather data, uh, welcome weather dot data. So datum is the singular form of data, and that indicates this is an individual record we're pulling out of this collection. Okay, so we'll say weather dot precip, and then we'll assign that to precip. So if you see what's going on there, we're starting assuming we're not going to hear anything and that the precip is zero. Now we're iterating over all of our weather records, which we expect to only have one. We're taking the precipitation uh, for the location that we've selected, which is Cincinnati, and we're using that to uh, override the value that was in precip before. So provided that this has a number, it's going to be stored in this variable called precip. Now we can do some decisions. If precip greater than one, uh, sorry, let's do less than one. Then we'll then we will say view data weather message equals water your plants. Let's do an else view data weather message equals enjoy the rain. Something like that and terminate with the semicolon and save. So more to come on that is we do some further integrations with the HTML, but at this point, we just wanna see if we can consume a bit of weather data. So first of all, uh, read all text. So that's going to read my key. Now it's going to apply my key to the end of this URL because we're using this plus, which is the concatenation operator. And F10, read the weather read it into objects, and then iterate over those objects. Let's see what the precipitation was in Cincinnati today. 
Uh, it was zero, and I can attest to that. It was a dry day today, so we did get zero precip. You see, there was only one record, but we still had to iterate over it. Precip is less than one, so we're going to say water your plants, and then we can have that list of water-loving plants, which we have below. I'll go ahead and just quickly uh, step through that, but you see, what follows is what we did in our last couple of videos, where we read in specimens at the Cincinnati Zoo, and then we read in plant data, and we matched the plant data up to the specimens. So F5, and the page appears. And I said we won't worry about putting the message on the page just yet, but that message about water your plants or enjoy the rain, we could probably put that up above here to give it a little bit of context about why we're picking out these particular plants that like to consume water and a lot of water. Now I've committed these changes up to GitHub, and if we take a look here, we go to five commits, and we see consume weather and plant data combined to create specimen report card. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this change. And if I scroll down, you see four changed files. If we take a look at this, we see the git ignore has changed, uh, the code behind has changed, and then a couple of the generated classes from QuickType have changed. What you do not see here is that API key. You see that we are indeed reading it in here, uh, but you see that that API key file indeed has not been pushed to GitHub because we added it to the git ignore. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.